We are coming to you live from the Appleton Museum of Art in Ocala, Florida. I am Miss Deborah, and this week we are going to be doing several different kinds of art, but always keeping the theme of animals. Of course, animals are so broad, you can always do something that would be your favorite animal, explore new animals, work with patterns and animals. It's endless. So hopefully this week we'll dive into some areas that maybe you haven't uh, really explored before. The first project that we're going to work on is in air dry clay. We're going to be doing an owl and I'll give you some tips and some suggestions on rolling out the clay, working with air dry clay. Now here's the important thing on this. We're going to work to establish the base product today so that we have that ready, but it must dry and it's going to take at least a week to dry. So what I would request is once you have your piece ready to please put that in a safe place so that it can dry all week. And then we'll come back on Friday and do some painting on it. The other project that we're going to work on is a stylized horse. It's going to be a sculpture in a specific type of sculpture. We'll call it slot sculpture. And again, if horses aren't your favorite, work along with me today. I have included a pattern so that you can make the best use of your time and your space and then explore other kinds of animals, giraffes, zebras, of course, that could just be painting your horse, cats, dogs. It's endless what you can do once you start exploring different techniques. I'm going to go ahead and just show you like this. So I have my air dry clay here. This happens to be Crayola air dry clay. Any kind of air dry clay is fine. If you do not have that, of course, you can do the same techniques with even Play-Doh. That works perfectly fine. It's probably not going to dry dry and last so that you can paint it. But truly, if you are just working along for the technique, that'll work fine. Also, I know that we have used before the salt dough that will dry. If you don't have clay, you can always use the salt air dry clay. A few other little things that I have here is I have a variety of different rollers. This is just a tube from probably saran wrap because it's a little heavier duty. This is not just a paper towel roll. It's very solid. And this you might recognize as just PVC. That works as an awesome roller. And if you're lucky enough to have just a regular pastry roller, that works great too. Just be sure to clean it well because most of us keep this in our kitchen. I also have a couple rulers here. These rulers are going to be used for two things. One, I want to measure to see that I have just about the right size to start my owl. And also I'm going to use them flat on the table side by side to try to gauge how thick the owl's going to be. I don't want it to be too thick because it's going to need to dry. So that, if you don't have that, you can always eyeball that. But remember, I'm showing you different techniques and tips that you can also use in the future. I do have some very sophisticated tools here. A plastic knife, a plastic fork, and a plastic spoon. Now, these are actually very similar to fancy clay tools, but for our purposes, these will work just great. I also have just some toothpicks. This is a um, shish kebab skewer. So that's going to come and to be helpful when I include a place to hang my owl. So I'll use that pointed end for that. I also have a marker. Now this is not, I'm not interested in it as a marker, but the cap on this marker is perfect to make a little eyeball. So I discovered that and I made sure that I kept one on hand for that. One other very important thing, clay is a little messy. So I do have a damp cloth ready because it's going to get your hands messy and a dry cloth to dry my hands off. So you might want to make sure if you don't have quick access to a sink that you at least have a damp paper towel or something like that handy. Because like I said, it gets a little messy, just a little bit. All right, fine. 
finally, the last thing that I have is this is just a paper box, a cardboard box. It's not particularly heavy. Thing about this, there are two sides. One is just regular cardboard. The other side is kind of glossy. Please do not use the glossy side. Clay will stick to it. So don't use that side. Use the cardboard side here because your clay is not going to stick to that. And then we can lift it up gently and flip it because we want to keep it from sticking to the surface. But just cardboard works great for a surface. The finished product here that I have is about three inches by five inches, give or take. So he's not a particularly big piece, which with the air dry clay, that works really well. The one thing that I'll mention because I forgot something, so don't let me forget this. I did not put a place for him to hang and I don't really want him just sitting around. So later I'm gonna have to come back and fashion a hanger for him, but we can do that on the front side. So we won't forget that. So, as I mentioned, we're going to make the base of the owl today, and then we're going to let it dry all week long and come back on Friday to paint it. And then if we want, even on Friday, we can add some more details here on his wings, or we could add some pattern even in here. All right, I'm going to set this guy aside for now. I have my surface, and as you can see, I've already worked on this. That's perfectly fine. No reason to get rid of it. I'm going to be doing basically the same, the same thing. My air dry clay. Now, remember, I said this is a little bit messy. So I've got my cloth ready, but it's just natural material. There's nothing in here that's going to bother us or anything. So I'm not going to worry about getting a little bit messy. It's good for us. Now, with the air dry clay, or with any clay, when I work on the surface, it's going to jiggle the table probably a little bit and jiggle the camera a little bit. So if you just be a little patient why that's happening, it might go in and out of focus because it's jiggling, but then I'll stop and we can get back to sharp focus. Okay. I think I've got probably more than I need here. I've been working this just a little bit so that it's a little more pliable. I'm going to just take off a chunk of it though, because I just think it's too much. What I'm going for here is think about a nice sized apple. Not too big, not too small. Yeah, that's just about the right size maybe. And if it's too big, we can always cut it off so that we've got about the size that we need. Okay, I'm still, this is uh, basically called kneading. It's K-N-E-A-D-I-N-G, kneading. I'm kneading the dough. As I'm kneading it, I'm trying not to let it just go nilly willy. I want it to kind of be in the shape that I'm going to roll out. Yeah, I probably, yep, I still have too much here. So I'm just going to take some more of this off. Okay, now I'm going to continue working with this. I'm pressing it down with my fingers and I'm also starting to get my shape going here. If any of you have ever seen or maybe have ever made sugar cookies where you roll out the dough, this is a very, very similar to that. Now you might notice I'm flipping it. I'm going to keep flipping it here as I I get going because I want to ensure that it does not stick to my surface. Okay, I've got a pretty good shape here. It's a good start. So let's see here. I believe in the instructions that we, I talked about a shape that's about six inches wide and seven inches tall or long. So I've got a little ways to go to get that. Does it have to be exact? No, that's just to give you a guideline. I could use my PVC and and roll with that. I feel a little bit of stick to it, so I want to be careful not to let it stick. This is a little small, perhaps, for this job. And actually, I know that this cardboard roller works great. And then give it a flip. Don't forget to give it a flip. Now, I find that it's important to roll from the center, just rolling back and forth. What's going to happen is your edges are going to be much, much thinner than 
than the center. So if you roll from the center out, it keeps it a little more even. My grandma taught me that when she was rolling out pies. And there again, it's basically the same technique. What I'm doing here is I can see a little air bubble there. So I'm pressing, there's a little air trapped in there. I'm pressing that out. Okay, I had mentioned a technique, just a trick that we can use is laying two wooden rulers or yardstick. This one's a yardstick cut in half. And I can feel that this is still thicker than that. And I want that to not be so thick. So this is one way that I can pull that out a little bit and not, and to keep it, to keep it even, to not let it get ill shaped on the edges. So even as you're working, you might notice here on mine, when I lift it up, that there's that dark spot. It's able to draw the moisture away from it without it. So what's happened when you have a shiny surface like that, that little bit of moisture is causing um, a suction. So it's sticking. So cardboard works. And even, like I said, I think if you have a, a solid surface, like um, somebody mentioned cookie sheet, that if you find that it's it sticking, add a piece of construction paper under there. And I think that'll help. So now I know I have, I've got this, uh, it's actually a little over seven inches long, but I wasn't quite wide enough. So instead of continuing to roll the length, turned it around so I can roll it out just a little bit wider here. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just making sure that my edge got a nice rounded edge here. Probably cannot see on the camera, but there's a little bit of area here that looks like it could crack even as it dries. So I have this damp cloth up here. It's just a damp cloth. There's a little bit of moisture in the bottom bottom of my bowl, but I think if I have just a little bit of water on my fingertips, I don't want to use too much water. It's going to make it too wet and sludgy. Don't want that. And I can go and work these out gently. So all I'm doing is adding the tiniest bit of water and working on those edges. Okay, so those edges are, they're looking pretty good. If I let those just go, and it dried and cracked, it would be something that would be very difficult for me to hide or to fix. And it just makes your project very fragile. So I'm flipped it over and now I'm doing that other side as well. And this way I can kind of look, here's a little tiny air bubble. I'm going to try to move that out. Can always put a little toothpick in there. There, I felt the air come out when I put a little toothpick to let it release the air in there. Do you feel like you've got a nice oval shape going here? Mine happens to be, oh, five and a half. Let's just get it a little broader. Okay. And not only do I have just about the right size here, but something else that's critical with this air dry clay, with really any clay, because it needs to dry. And if it's entirely too thick, it's not going to dry properly. So I'm just going to check here, see if I can tell you this one looks like it is absolutely no more than a quarter of an inch. I'm going to gently lift the two sides of my oval in towards the middle at a little bit of an angle. You can see how my hands are at a little bit of an angle here, and that's going to create the wings on my owl. So I need to do this a little gently because I don't want the clay to, to crack. I'm even going to pick this up again. So I know it's not sticking. I'm going to roll it at a little bit of an angle. Now, as you notice, it's not a very fast process here. I'm not just folding it over like a piece of bread. I'm working it gently so that it doesn't crack. I need to give the clay the opportunity to join the shape as I move it in. It, it's coming. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to lift this other side up too, because I want the sides to be about the same, right?
nothing wrong with rolling it out again. This isn't the first time I've made this one. I had to practice a couple times. And if yours is needs to be a little bit smaller so that you have what is the right thickness of clay, that's okay too. I needed to make mine big enough so that you all could see it. There we go. Now I finally got it to lay down. And what I see here are little cracks that need to be addressed. So I've got my little bit of water here and it's just the littlest bit to smooth it out. Yep, that's much better. I have it just barely not touching here in the front. If they touch, it's fine, but you definitely want it to touch the base. But when I'm, I'm putting my hands just on this damp cloth here and rubbing it and I can rub those little cracks out. So that's basically going to achieve two things when I rub these cracks out. First, it's going to keep it from cracking anymore. Ideally cracking anymore while we are allowing it it to dry. And then also it gives us a nice surface to paint. This material is very forgiving. And the beauty of this is that if you're not happy with it or something's not working quite right, think about what can I do a little bit differently to correct that problem. I tried to make sure that mine was rolled out no more than a quarter of an inch, not too thick or not too thin. Then when I was folding it over, I think you might have noticed I did it very slowly and as I was doing it I was working the clay. Clay is elastic quality to it so we needed to work it so that wasn't just going to if I just folded it over quick it would have cracked. Doing it slowly gave it an opportunity to work into that fold. Now I'm ready for what's going to be the final fold and again I'm going slowly. I'm starting at the top. This is going to be my head you can see my thumbs are pinching this just a little bit down as I'm bringing this fold over. So like I mentioned, I knew even though it looked a little bit long that I was going to fold this over. Now we can really see why it's important that it's not too thick because otherwise I would have just an awful amount of clay that needed to dry. Now the clay will dry eventually. We're just really hoping that it'll dry by Friday. Friday. That looks just about right. I'm going to try to lift it up just a little bit more. It's not sticking to my surface, so that's a good thing. Again, I'm just going to take my fingers, dampen them up a little bit to smooth this out. I don't have to worry about it being too perfect because remember, I'm going to make a couple eyes to put on there. Now, one thing I did do just to make it a little more interesting is I pulled out the areas that are like the tufts and feathers for his ears. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing in and pulling it out. Again, I'm not working very quickly because the clay is not going to respond to that. It'll break off. Pinching it in just a little bit and then pulling out for a couple little ears. Not too big. This is more of a, um, I think it's a barred owl. Okay, so are we ready to make some eyes? And then there's one other feature we'll add, and that is, of course, a beak. So I had a little bit of leftover clay. I think that's going to do it. So I need to have basically three parts, two eyes. And the way that I like to make sure that these are, uh, especially his eyes, are kind of even is I'm going to take my little little bit of clay and I'm going to roll between my hands the start of a coil and I'm going to roll this coil out pressing just ever so gently rolling back and forth I have a little coil here I'm going to take my knife just going to cut the end off because I don't need that I need a section that's going to be a beak so I'm going to make that oh that's about an inch long and then I need two sections for eyes we can start with about an inch long. We'll see how that works. So these pieces are all about the same amount of clay. For my two eyes, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to squish them up and roll it into a little ball. Think like a little tiny marble. And then basically, I'm going to flatten them out. Again, I'm going to keep trying to flip it 
is I don't want it to stick. I have a little area here that I need to fix. So I'm gonna take care of that right away because as I keep pressing down, it's just gonna get to be a bigger crack if I don't try to fix it. So I have a nice flat disc. And of course I need two of those. By starting out with a ball, it makes it a lot easier to end up with a nice round circle. Now these are pretty thin because they're gonna go on top. Let's see. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of detail to my eyes before I put them on. As I mentioned, I have a just a marker here. It's only the cap. Any kind of small circle work, um, or you can always just use a toothpick and add some details. I'm just gonna use the top of it, and I'm gonna try to get it uh, just about in the center and just put a little indentation there. Just press down lightly. I don't want it to go all the way through. There, I think you can kind of see his eyes. And then to add a little more interest, I have a toothpick and I'm just pressing down. I'm not even really scratching the surface here. I'm just pressing down to give his eyes a little more detail all the way around. And the way I try to make this to be uh, somewhat even, because they are his eyes and they are symmetrical, is I'm going to work top and bottom, side to side, and then fill in these smaller areas. That's a, just a good way to keep it a little more symmetrical so they're even. And of course, it'll make a big difference when we come back and paint these guys too. So I have two eyes here, and now we're going to do a different kind of technique that is used in clay. And this has a particular name. Again, oh, fancy, how fancy. Scoring. But scoring will allow these two pieces to attach better. So what I'm going to do is I know about where my eyes are going to go. Yeah, that's about right. And ever so gently on the back side, I'm going to use my toothpick and do just some score marks in it. Just think um, kind of tic tac toe -y, back and forth in order to rough up the surface of the clay. This is scoring the clay. And like I said, what that's going to do is it's going to help these pieces grab onto each other. Then I know about where these are going to go. I'm going to make just some scratch marks here to score that surface as well. Then I can take the two, put them together, and gently press those down. I don't want to press too hard because I don't want to lose my indentation. I can always go back, but I don't want to lose the shape of my eye. And then that should feel pretty stuck even just to, to touch it. I'm going to do the same technique of scoring with my beak. I already have one little piece here here, but I think it needs to be, I'm going to flatten it out just a little bit at the top. And then I'm going to make the bottom a little skinnier. That might be a little long. So let's pinch off a little bit of that. elongating the end of his beak just a little bit. So actually what I've ended up here is uh, an elongated triangle. See if that's about right. That looks about right. I'm going to add a few score marks, rough up the surface a little bit on the beak and on his head. I want to slide that right in between his eyes. Oh yeah, he's He's looking owlish. One of the details that we can add to the beak is they have these two little nostrils. Okay, one final detail that will add to this, and then we're going to set him up to dry. Okay, we're going to add one more detail here, and I have a spoon, and we're going to use the end of the spoon, and we're just going to make a little indentation in his wing to indicate that so I'm going to start at the top of his wing and just gently press down so I get that little curve indentation. 
Okay, so I can still pick him up. I'm going to ever so carefully turn him over. I have my shish kebab stick. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this at an angle. I don't want it to go straight in. I need it at a little bit of an angle down from the top. I don't want to put it in a spot where it's going to pull out. And I'm just going to put a hole in there and work that. So now I have a little place where the nail, I put a nail in the wall and then it can go. All right. Now I have a place I can hang him from. Okay. Now I'll just come back and I'm just um, staggering. I'm not putting all of these little marks in a, in a row. I'm adding like, let's say three across and then maybe two and then three. They're feathers. They don't need to be perfect. We just want to give an indentation here. It gives a little more visual interest. Now you could also do this on the flat surface here. I'm going to leave mine because because I might want to paint something like uh, flowers or something like that in that area. Now, as you're wrapping up there, you can always adjust this ever so slightly. If there's area, I could use the back of my spoon with a tiny bit of moisture and smooth out an area that it might be bothering me. But I think right now, I'm ready for him to dry. What I'm going to do is some bottle caps here. And I'm going to lift this up a little bit by positioning it on the bottle caps. It just is a, a way to allow air underneath here as well. Otherwise, it's right on the cardboard. The last thing that I'm going to do before I set this aside, so I just dropped it on the top. So what that's going to help it do is dry more evenly. Tomorrow, I'll probably come and just take it off. You don't have to leave it on all week, but as it starts to dry, I want to have an opportunity for it to dry evenly as it starts. And that way, nothing is going to drop into it. Now we're going to set this aside. Please put it in a safe place so that on Friday, we'll bring that out, hopefully nice and dry, so we can add a little bit of color to him. And I will get out the next project that we're going to work on. I might need that. Now I'm going to put my air dry clay right now. I'm going to put it back in the bag in the container. I still have clay in here. I can still play with that later. If I leave it out, though, it's going to get dry and it's not going to be as easy to work with. So I'm putting that away properly. I can clean up my work surface and I need to clean my hands just a little bit. Good thing I have my cloth here. This comes off really easy. So it's much easier than paint. So it's no big deal. Just a little bit on your hands. Now we are going to do a sculpture and this sculpture is made out of cardboard. Specifically, I like to use cereal boxes. And I have quite a collection of cereal boxes and cracker boxes, that kind of thing, because the cardboard is awesome. All right. So I want to just share with you quickly the inspiration for our stylized horses. So here in Ocala, we have a wonderful collection of life-size, these are big, life-size horses all throughout the whole city. This started in 2000. So there was about 20 of them that they introduced that then. And then in 2020, they introduced 20 more horses. And basically artists throughout the city and throughout the state are able to paint their stylized horse. We call it horse fever. This on the cover of the magazine does happen to be one of my all-time favorites. I drive by it whenever I can. It's called honeybee for obvious reasons. But one of the reasons I love it so much is just this contrast in color with the blue and the gold. The ones that we have at the Appleton is one of the original horses. And that one is really unique because it's not just painted. It's done in mosaic, which basically they 
added pieces of uh, ceramic and china and maybe even little pieces of glass. They added those onto the surface to create the pattern. And he resides right in the entrance way of the Appleton Museum. So if you're ever able to come, you would see him for yourself. So that's the inspiration for these. I'll put this aside. The piece that I did for a sample is this guy here. Horses obviously do not look like this, but he's a stylized horse and he's my horse that can look uh, any way that I want him to. This technique, which is called slot sculpture, are connected by using just slots in the material. And once you know how to do that technique, you can make any kind of animal. So I do have a template that we'll be working with. Basically, I need one body, one set of ears, but I need two legs. So don't forget, you need to cut this one out twice. I have a cereal box here. This is a pretty good size box. And I tried to make our pattern just about the right size. The first thing I'm gonna do is any of the boxes that you have, that cracker box, that kind of thing may work, um, will definitely work. You may need to cut down your pattern a little bit. All the boxes are going to be a little bit of a different size, and that's okay. The thing about this cardboard, too, is it's a little easier to cut than corrugated cardboard. Whenever I work with that, and I love working with that as well, I try to make sure that those shapes are very simple shapes, just so that it's easier to cut. I have my pattern already cut out, so I need to transfer and trace two legs, one body, and one set of ears onto my cardboard. And remember, what I did is I opened it up. Now on the cardboard, the boxes will notice just like with the owl, there's a shiny side and a matte side. When we paint these, this shiny side in particular probably is going to need an extra coat of paint. So we'll keep in mind when we get ready to do that. So now you'll be able to see this a little bit better. I have a pencil here. Well, it looks like I'm going to need two boxes today. This doesn't look like it's quite the right size, but I have more cardboard. So I'm just going to do the outline here quickly. Now, what I did is I put it right up against this fold so I know I can cut right here and it's going to be just about right. and it's going to be painted over. So this dark line's not gonna be part of what I end up with. Now, once you have the technique down, it'd be fun and interesting to try some different shapes. Now, of course, we're talking all about animals here, but other shapes can be made. Other designs can be created with this slot technique. I have another piece here. All right. Now, when I'm cutting anything, especially something a little heavier, I'm just going to come and I'm with my scissors and I'm going to do a quick cut around the whole thing. It is a lot easier if I don't have all this extra cardboard or paper for that matter. So in here, I'm just going to give it a rough cut and then I'll come back and cut it out.
on the slot sculpture that we did earlier. All of this cardboard that you have left, you might want to hang on to that and give that a try. You can cut out simple geometric shapes, circles, rectangles, squares, add your slots and build those. Now I did bring out for this just a little bit bigger scissors than my regular paper scissors. I think it just makes it a little bit easier. And again, this cardboard isn't that thick, so it's a little easier than that heavy cardboard. Thankfully, I remembered two legs. Thank you, because yeah, we needed four legs all together, two sets of So when I start painting these, what I'm going to do is start on the side that's painted that is the slick side and paint that first because that I know is going to need at least one extra layer. And as I'm cutting this out, I'm also thinking, hmm, what kind of design would I like for my horse? I showed you the design of the honeybee. I love those colors, actually, and I love honeybees. I do like that. The one that I used or that I painted earlier with the light blue and the sunflowers, they're again, blue and yellow. It's just a color combination that I really like. Some of the other horses that they had painted throughout the city, they had some that had swamps and alligators on them. Okay, that was like a really very realistic alligator too. I mean, his mouth was wide open with tons of teeth showing. Um, a very interesting one. But remember, I'm here in Florida and we have alligators. So actually it worked really well. There was one horse that featured all of these um, places that you might want to visit around the city. And guess what was on there? The Appleton Museum of Art. Some of the pieces are themes. Like there's one that is musical and nature. So it has like sheet music on it and different musical instruments. There was a patriotic flag that was wonderful. There, or excuse me, a patriotic horse with a flag that was wonderful. There was another one that, oh my gosh, the detail, all these children that were just so fun and happy. That was a wonderful piece. Okay, you can see I have my two sets of legs. I have my ears ready and my body. Now I was going to mention, I'm going to go ahead and draw this in, but I'll paint over it later. I have an area here that I designed in the pattern to suggest the mane. That's why it kind of bows out a little bit right there. Okay, while you are finishing up cutting out there, I'm going to go ahead and get some paint ready here. I might need a little bit of water. I have my bowl here. Okay, in case I needed a little bit of water. A tip or a suggestion that I would offer, if you are thinking about painting your horse a lighter color, let's just say a light yellow or pink, you might want to start by painting the horse white and then adding a second layer with the color that you, you know, ultimately would like him to be. I think it just makes it, um, it makes your color more true and it gives a nicer final product. So that being said, let's just go ahead and put some white paint on it first. This isn't as easy to see, and I apologize for that, but I don't want to get the surface. I'm protecting my work surface here. There. No, I won't ruin that. Now, I don't have to be particularly neat about this. I'm just getting a surface on there. I have a bigger brush that I'm using, too. Of course, that helps a lot.
There. Now these won't take long to dry. I didn't make a particularly heavy layer here, but it'll make a big difference on how those colors look when we work on them. Okay, I wanted to share with you why that's drying quick, how we're going to make the slots for our slot construction. So I already have some pieces here that I prepped ahead of time. Now we can go ahead and paint these if we want to, but this way we'll be able to talk about it just a little bit. So your legs are only going to need one slot. And you can see that this slot a little bit longer and if you look carefully you can see right through there the slot on the body doesn't have to be that long but let's just test it and see Okay, that looks like it's going to be just about right. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is when you start making your slots, start smaller, like this is about an inch. And if you need it a little bit longer, come back and make it a little bit longer. Okay, so I have a piece here that I'm just going to make a slot in. When I make a slot, I am cutting in and then as close as I can, I'm cutting right next to it. Same length, I have this little tiny piece right here that I'm just gonna pull off. I don't even need to cut it, I can pull it right off. But there you can see that I have a tiny slot. I don't want it too wide. If it's too wide, then the two pieces aren't gonna fit snugly. They're gonna fit loosely. And if that happens, you know what? I'll just glue it. But if we are able to keep the slots where they'll hold it together without glue, anytime that you wanna take it apart, then you can. So I got them as close close together as I possibly can. I have that little piece right there. There it is. And I'm just going to pull that off. I don't need it. So you do have plenty of cardboard from cutting out your pieces. You can always go back to a, a piece just like I did here and practice this a little bit. If your base coat is already dry, then let's go back and add the color that you would like your stylized horse to be. I think that I can go ahead and add color to this side. I'm going to start with green and I'm going to use this white that I have here because I don't want it to be a dark color. Now, because my horse is a stylized horse, this is not a horse that you're going to see in the pasture because of course, well, chances are there are no green horses. Now I have several pieces that I'm painting here. So I want to make sure that I have enough paint for that. I don't want to be wasteful, of course, but I want to make sure Sure that I have enough. I'm going to start with a, just a nice light green. Let's see what happens. Ooh. Now we've been talking about things, um, designs that are kind of natural elements, bees and butterflies and flowers, but it doesn't have to be that. There's no reason why geometric horses can't be added as well. Now, if we get a nice collection of horses, we'll have a whole herd and then we can have our own herd of horse beaver.
there isn't a tail on mine. You're you're absolutely right. So what kind of what kind of thing can we do? What elements could we add to create a tail? Now we could always paint one, right? What else? We could cut some more cardboard. Do you think we could make a slot construction the cardboard tail? Because when I have a tail coming off, I can't butt up the piece this way. I can't make it connect that way. So I need another spacer piece here. So now you can stylize the tail however you would like. To me, nothing's prettier than a long horse tail. Now, personally, I found the ears kind of tricky to do. As a matter of fact, uh, some of the folks here were teasing me a little bit about his ears. So I struggled with that a little bit. So feel free to adapt them however you would like. And one thing I wanted to point out, as I'm adding this wet paint on this thin cardboard, it's curling a little bit. It's bowing. It's warping a little bit. If that's happening, once the piece is totally dry, you might put something on top of them. Like, let's think you situate them under a cookie sheet and put a couple books on top of them. Or do something like that to flatten them out, because they'll flatten right back out. It's just just right now, we're adding something wet on top of them. On the head of the horse, remember, we talked about having a place for his mane. This area here is exaggerated a little bit so that I could come back and add a mane. So the ears are going to come in front of the mane. And again, the construction is the same. We have our slot construction. Now this is a little heavier cardboard. You can see that here. So my slots are a little bit bigger. Yours are going to be small, but I have a slot both in my ears and in the head. Basically, I situated the slot right in front of where the mane is ending. So he has a little forehead here. This slot for his head, again, that's not very deep. The deeper slot is on the ears, and that's how I can control and make sure that the ears come down flush with the head. And in other words, so they're not sticking up like this, because uh, that looks more like a bow than it does ears. We want them to come all the way down. So in this, it'll be about the same. I started off very small slot. One way that you can even do this is if you angle your scissors ever so slightly and create a very long V so that really this is ever so slightly more here than here. That's just another way of doing it if that's easier. I need a slot on my ears. And then I'll test to see. Okay, now it looks to me like I could make the slot just a little bit deeper here. And I can take that apart and just ever so slightly make sure that it's a little bit tiny, tiny adjustment. This one's pretty tight too. I could even open that up. Just again, a slight adjustment. I'm not gonna try to cut that little piece out. I'm gonna pull it up and just pull it off. My scissors, that's a tiny spot in there. Oh yeah, I like that better. So as I'm working with them, and I've made this more than once, you can see I need to go back and to make slight adjustments. So don't be afraid to start out with smaller slots and try it. 
see how it fits. Now, I think it goes without saying, I can't do that on these because they're still wet. I can see they're still shiny, but I have this other piece here that will go ahead and work on a little bit. And if I have time, I'll come back to this one, but that way you've got a, a good opportunity to see how this is going to go together. Okay, so we're probably not going to get this one finished. So I have two legs as a get as Again, as I mentioned, my slots here are short and I built them up a little bit longer on the legs. The legs, I want it to come all the way up to his back. Pretty tight fit. That looks pretty good. Now, remember, this is a stylized horse. That, and in other words, it's not exactly correct. Horses don't have these sharp corners. I could always smooth that off if I wanted to. And... It's important that our legs are the same length so that he'll stand. I have two legs. My pieces I need to put in a book so that they ta -da, are a little flatter, but it still stands. Let's see if I can fashion a tail real quick. Okay, in my slot construction, I need for the tail, a tail, obviously. And in this case, I need a connector. And if I were to put my tail on there and I find that it throws it off balance, is there anything that you can think of offhand that might help correct that? The way I was thinking about it is to make the tail smaller, to reduce the weight of it. But I love of long flowing tails. So maybe the way would be to actually have it touch the ground to help support it. That way would work wonderfully. Okay, I'm just going to have a real simple tail, not too big. And in all of your artwork, whether it is painting 2D or, it, and especially when you're working three-dimensional in sculptures, there could be problems to be solved. And solving problem is not throw it away and start over. Take a look at it. Think about it. Figure out how could I do it a little bit differently. Okay, so on my tail, well, this is kind of small. I'm not very happy with this already, but I'm going to go, I'm going to just go with it. I am going to make a small piece here that's going to actually attach it. Let's go ahead and take this apart so I can lay it down. Okay, so for my tail, what I need, I'm going to do this a little bigger, is I need a piece that's going to connect the two pieces together. So a connector. Obviously, I cannot make this work this way. There. I cannot make that slot construction work. Now, if I wanted to, I could just glue it. But we're working in slot construction. And the point is to build on this, to see how else we can problem solve it. What else can I do to make this work? So what I'm going to do is to take a smaller piece. Remember, this one's bigger so you can see it. I'm going to make a little slot here. I actually need two slots. These are kind of like, um, you know, connectagons. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here is we're creating a connectagon piece. So this piece is going to come into this area. Now, in order to make it real stable, I think I need just a tiny slot here too. Remember, I'm only making small slots and I can always make adjustments. Okay, and then my tail. I need this little slot in that and I notice that might work. Just a tiny slot here. Okay, so I had my little slot, my connecting slot. Um, when I finish this, I'll probably round off these edges a little bit. And then I add in my tail. Again, I want to make sure that these pieces are kind of flush. And if I were to round this off right now, because I can't take it, it'll give a bit of an illusion of the tail being three-dimensional. The stylized construction rounded off follows the same curve uh, this way as my tail. And of course I would paint my tail. And if I were gonna do it right now, I'm so inspired by rainbow, I'd have to make it a rainbow tail.
I am so glad that you were having fun today. I hope everybody enjoyed these projects with slot construction. What I would really hope is that you run with it, run like a horse and make your own projects here. I'm so looking forward to seeing them on Friday. I'm going to spin this around now. There we go. Okay, here is our stylized horse. So if I have the opportunity, which we're very busy around here, I'll definitely try to come back and finish mine off. But I already did one. I really want to see what you do. Wednesday, we're going to work on a painting that is a sunset or sunrise. It is a variant painting, a degrees of color with an elephant. And our elephant is a silhouette. So when you have that really bright light, oftentimes the piece in front of it will look black. So our elephant is only going to be a silhouette. And we'll add some other details to that. And oh, and also we're going to do a monoprint, which is a, a print, but we're making one at a time. That is going to be an eagle that will make like a stamp. So we'll have our very own eagle stamp. Everybody, it's been so much fun. Keep working, be creative, and I'll see you again on Wednesday. Bye now.